Mark Rosengarten. Welcome to... Ask Rosengarten. Hello and welcome to this weekend edition of Ask Rosengarten. Today we've got a couple of questions. The first one coming from Joseph Entman. The question is, do helium or neon react with any other known chemical? The answer to that question is no. Being noble gases, they are completely non-reactive. Now, krypton can be forced to react with fluorine in a laboratory. So can xenon, but it's very rare, very unstable compounds. None of the other noble gases can be chemically reacted or formed from a chemical reaction. This next question comes from Adam Eschel. Now, this one particular question is a very interesting one. What volume of 0.25 molar HNO3 solution, that's this, reacts with 42 milliliters of a 0.15 molar Na2CO3 solution, that's this. This is just a basic stoichiometry problem. You see, there's a 2 to 1 mole ratio of HNO3 to Na2CO3. But we, don't, we know the molarity of the solutions, not the number of moles of solution. So our first step is to find out how many moles of solution this 42 milliliters of 0.15 molar Na2CO3 is. Molarity is the number of moles of solute you have per liter of solution. Now if you want to find out moles, just rearrange this equation by multiplying both sides by liters. So we take the liters of solution. Now, 42 milliliters is actually 0 0.042 liters. You have to divide this by 1,000 to convert it into liters. So we have 0 0.042 liters times 0 0.15. Now, the unit molar is just an abbreviation for moles per liter, so that liters cancel out. That's why we had to convert milliliters to liters to start with. Now this gives us 0 0.0063 moles. Moles of what? Well, all this information pertains to the sodium carbonate. So we have this many moles of sodium carbonate. Okay, that's perfect. But what now? Well, it's a 2 to 1 ratio of HNO3 to Na2CO3. So I'm going to multiply this by that mole ratio. I'm going to put the Na2CO3 on the bottom with a coefficient of 1, and I'm going to put the HNO3 on the top with a coefficient of 2. I put the Na2CO3 on the bottom so that it simplifies out. Say goodbye to sodium carbonate. Say hello to HNO3. And that comes out to 0 0.0126 moles of HNO3. Great! But the question is asking, what volume of 0.25 molar? Okay, well that's fine. We're going to use the same equation now that we know moles and we know molarity to find liters. Now with liters in the denominator, the first thing you need to do is get liters the heck out of the denominator. So we'll multiply both sides by liters. Goodbye. Now we got to get rid of molarity, so we have to divide both sides by molarity in order to get liters by itself. Liters equals moles divided by molarity. Okay, so we know how many moles of HNO3 there are. We know the molarity of the HNO3. And the reason this works is, again, molarity is just an abbreviation for moles per liter, so that moles will cancel and leave us with liters when we're done. So 0 0.0504 liters. Now let's just double check for sig figs. We have three sig figs in the numerator, two sig figs in the denominator, so we got to knock this down to two sig figs, 0 0.05 zero liters, which is 50 milliliters. Now you don't necessarily have to convert to milliliters, this just simply says what volume, okay? So you could leave it in liters unless you were specifically at need to use milliliters. Now this is an interesting question, but I don't like the way it's set up for one reason. When they give you the molar mass of 40 grams per mole, they're only giving you one significant figure. We can do better than that. 
Sodium hydroxide is 23.0 plus 16.0 plus 1.0. That means the, mol the molar mass of NaOH is actually 40.0 grams per mole. There, now that won't be what limits our significant figures when we're done. So it's exactly the same kind of problem as before. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. Now which one of these do you know you can convert directly to grams? Well check this out, 40.0 grams per mole. Well it includes moles, so we can use this to convert moles into grams. So we need to solve for moles to figure this problem out. Multiply both sides by liters and then plug in the numbers. Again we got 350 milliliters, we need to turn that into liters, divide that by a thousand. That's 0 0.35 and I'm going to leave that zero off because there was no decimal point in the example you sent me. So that would be in liters times the molarity of the solution is 0 0.30 moles per liter. Say goodbye to liters. And that comes out to 0 0.105, let's see, two sig figs, two sig figs, 0 0.11 moles. Okay, now. Each mole weighs 40.0 grams. So to convert moles to grams, what we need to do is multiply it by the formula mass. 40.0 grams per mole. Goodbye moles. Little dimensional analysis here. Use your units to set your math problem up for you. And that comes out to 4.4 grams. Now, there's a device that's meant for making these kinds of solutions. It's called a volumetric flask. Uh, they usually don't come in 350 milliliter varieties. They come in 50, 100, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000. They come in that. So in order to make this solution, you'd probably end up having to use a graduated cylinder, which is not terribly accurate. But for the sake of what we're talking about here, what you would do is you would take 4.4 grams of sodium hydroxide, you would put it into a container and you would add to it some water. Now, sodium hydroxide is exothermic when you dissolve it and because the temperature goes up, the volume of the water in the solution goes up as well. So you're not going to be able to get a total volume until the bulk of this has been dissolved. Although 4.4 grams isn't enough to really make a huge difference. So what you do is you take your 4.4 grams, you put it in, you put some water in, and you gradually fill it up until it's up to the 350 milliliter line. Then you have your solution. It's a very practical application. This is what we have to do all the time as chemists to make solutions. And you know what? You don't want to hire anybody to make your solutions. You always want to make your own solutions. That way you know exactly what it is you're getting. Unless, of course, you purchase the solutions from a company. And the last question we're going to tackle today is, how many grams of NaCl is needed? Is needed? Huh, just goes to show that English can transcend even science. How many grams of NaCl are needed to make 1.5 liters of 8.0% WW solution? Now, this 8.0%, I'm just estimating that because I couldn't read. You had some notes written in there and I couldn't quite make out anything beyond 8.0%. Uh, percent. The density is 1.07 grams per cubic centimeter and the molar mass is 58.5 grams per mole. Okay, now if the salt is going to make up 8.0 percent of the weight of the solution, the first thing we need to do is find out how much this 1.5 liters of solution weighs. And then we're simply going to take 8.0 percent of that. And the reason we can do this is because it's a weight in weight solution. So, we take density equals mass over volume. We're trying to find the mass, so we multiply both sides by volume to cancel it out. Now we plug in the volume, except we can't use just straight liters because our density is in cubic centimeters. Now it turns out that there's a thousand cubic centimeters per liter, but a cubic centimeter is the same as one milliliter. So what we can do is convert liters into milliliters and that'll make it so much easier to do. So we'll multiply this by 1,000. So the volume we come up with is 1,500 cubic centimeters. Again, a milliliter and a cubic centimeter represent the same amount of volume. And we're going to multiply that by the density, which is 1.07 grams per cubic centimeter. Now the way it works is simply this. 
water has a mass on average of about one gram per cubic centimeter. But if you add salt to that, you're going to increase its density. So you really need to know the density of the solution in order to make this work. The cubic centimeters cancel out and we come up with 1,605, well, that's two sig figs and three sig figs. We're gonna knock it down to two sig figs, 1,600 grams. That is how much solution we have total. That includes the water and it includes the salt. Now, according to this, it's an 8% weight by weight solution. So we're gonna take 8% of that. We're gonna multiply it by 0 0.080. All right, right, 8% divided by 100. And this comes out to 128, again, two sig figs, 130 grams of salt. So if you've got 1.5 liters of solution, where 8% by weight of the solution is salt, we take our volume and use the density to figure out exactly how many grams the solution weighs, then we take 8% of that. Now you might be asking, what about this molar mass? Well, <laughs> you don't need it. It's unnecessary information. In this problem, we don't have to convert moles to grams or grams to moles. It's a simple percent of the total weight. So for a 1.5 liter solution, it's made up of 130 grams of sodium chloride and the difference in number of grams of water to make up your solution. This can allow you to calculate the molality of the solution, which is also handy when you do colligative properties, you know, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression. Well, I hope that answers the questions you guys have sent in. I hope to get a few more so I can continue doing this. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. You can email me at askrosengarten at gmail.com. So what are you waiting for? Ask Rosengarten.